Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today's video, um, as you can see by the title, this video is about Lyme disease, about my life with Lyme disease, about just Lyme disease in general. This is a very different video to what I normally film. Not that I've filmed so many videos. <laughs> I know it's bad, I'm working on it, it's just a lot of work. Um, but this video is so important and so dear to my heart that if there's any video that gets views, please let it be this one because what I'm about to say is so important and I want as many people as possible to see this. So I've been planning to film this video for about three years now, which I know is so bad and I'm now finally doing it. I'm so proud of myself because this took so long. Um, you know, three years ago... Oh shit. So as I was saying, I've been planning to film this video for about three years now and I never actually got as far as... Well, actually, I got two times I filmed it, but both of those times I deleted everything because I hated it. I was just too scared to upload it. This time is different. I am gonna do this. And you know, I'm now finally doing it because um, a year ago I got very sick again after having the most wonderful summer of my life. Finally, I felt what it was like, like somehow felt what it was like to be, to live a normal life, to feel somewhat healthy, so obviously. It was far from being healthy, but it was getting close, and I totally fell back into it in September 2020, and I was like, why is this happening now? I was doing so well, and then I started to think, what if this is happening for a reason? Because now I have such a big, big platform, and if I never would have fallen back into that um, level of sickness, I never would have talked about Lyme disease online, and I think now that I have a platform, I kind of got sick again for a reason to share this with the world that's how I feel about it and from September on I've been playing this video but I've obviously been very sick again since September but then around May June I finally started to feel well again you probably noticed by the amount of content that I've been making so I went to my Instagram stories and I asked you guys to ask me questions so that this video would be a little bit more structured um, and I'm so glad I did this because I was so shocked by the responses. I, I'm so glad I'm filming this video because um, there were two responses that I got so many times. First of all, the question, what is Lyme disease? The fact that so many people don't know what it is shocks me so bad. It's, it's so bad that this is the case because Lyme disease is more common in the United States than breast cancer. Just to give an example. And... Might I add to that, that most Lyme disease cases aren't even diagnosed, so they are not in the system, so the st st statistics are much worse than it says. And the second response that I got so many times was like, oh, I feel so bad for you because my mom has Lyme disease, or my sister, or my friend, or so many people that said that someone in their environment is suffering from Lyme disease. So on one side I got so many responses of people not knowing what it is, and the other side I got so many people that struggle with it, you know? or no people that struggle with it, which is just... I think it's so important to feel... Oh, my dog. Anyways, I'm just gonna continue. That's why I feel it's so, so, so important that I'm finally filming this video and sharing my story with you guys. So I guess I'm gonna start this video off with the most asked question, which is, what is Lyme disease? Also, I um, removed all the records behind me because I thought it was a cute idea to match the records to my outfit, but I thought it was quite disturbing when I watched the video back, so I'm now keeping it simple like this. So the first question is, what is Lyme disease and what kind of symptoms do you have? Or like, what kind of symptoms come with Lyme disease? So Lyme disease is an illness that you can get... That was not the question, how you can get Lyme disease. But I'm just gonna, gonna tell this as well, so you kind of know what it all is. So Lyme disease is an illness you get from... The most common way to get it is from the bite of a tick, but there's so many other ways you can get it from different insects like um, mosquitoes, bugs, you can even get it from like the lice, you know, those lice that get in your hair and get so itchy. <laughs> you can get Lyme disease from that. Also, disclaimer, if I'm laughing in this video, it's not funny. It's nothing in this video, is, there's nothing to laugh about, it's just laughing is kind of like a way for me to cope with it, so... So I'm sometimes laughing, it's just me kind of hiding the pain or in a way, I don't know. It's not really funny, but sometimes I just have... Well, sometimes things are funny, but please don't look at this, look at this video as a funny video, because it's not. 
I'm just that li I'm just like that. I can never stop laughing. But you can also get it um, from mother to the children. So for example, if I would have children, there would be a big chance that they could get Lyme disease. So no children for me. <laughs> That's also how you can get it. There's numerous other ways, but the most common way is through the bite of a tick. Um, I know that I'm not quite sure about this, but I believe that 25% of all ticks carry the Borrelia burgon, the bacteria that uh, causes Lyme disease with them. So 25% of ticks carry Lyme disease with them. Not everyone gets sick, but how do you say this? It's in you, and when you go through a period of stress, um, the bacteria gets like. It takes its chance and to like, how do I explain this? Like for example, um, I got bitten by a tick when I was 11 and I didn't get sick um, up until a year later when I started high school. It's very different in the Netherlands, you started at like 12, 13 years old. Um, I only got sick then because I got uh, through a period of so much stress, you know, a new school and everything. And that's when the Lyme disease, uh, like the bacteria was like... This is my moment to take over this body. So like you can ca already carry it with you. There's now already so many people walking around with Lyme disease not having symptoms yet because they can come later on, you know? That's how you get it. Um, the symptoms that I experience are so many that uh, too many to mention in this video, but I will just say the most severe ones that I have. Um, the one thing that's the worst always is my exhaustion. Like for example, I can film this video, but this is after this video I'm totally wiped out, I have to lay down for the rest of the day, I can't do anything but film this video. This is something that no one sees behind all the content that I make. You always see me running around doing things but when I'm not filming or not taking photos, you know, I'm always resting because I always make content when I feel good, if you know what I mean. So, um, exhaustion is the main thing. Again, there's also a lot of pain that comes with it. I'm lucky because I got... No, I'm not lucky. But the pain is not the main problem with me. I know so many Lyme patients that have such bad pain that it's really like crying, crying, crying from the pain and just non-stop pain. But it, I have a lot of pain, but it's something that I could live with. It's definitely not something that bothers me a lot. And I think it's because my tick bite was behind my ear and that's why I got more neurological issues rather than like actual pain in my legs and stuff like that. I do have that, but not as severe. But I then do have neurological issues, which is just so terrifying and so scary. And to name you a few, um, my symptoms actually started with um, migraine attacks. So actually I call them migraine attacks, but they were never migraine attacks. That's what the doctor told, told me. They were, looking back at it, those were the earliest signs of Lyme disease. So as I said in school, I, it started off with like, oh, I'm getting out of breath. <laughs> it's quite hard to talk about this, to be honest. It all started with me having Lyme attacks. So it's, I was in school and suddenly I saw like weird things in front of my eye and, and I really didn't know what was going on and suddenly like my eyesight went black. I didn't know how to talk anymore. <laughs> you know, it was a bit like that. Um, then the whole right side of my body got paralyzed. Usually this already happened when I was back home because, you know, I got this, saw this in school and I was like, I have to go home right now. And this usually happened like in like an hour after that. So like the right side of my body would get completely paralyzed and then I would have like a very weird tickling feeling from my throat running up and spreading throughout the whole right side of my body. Um, then I had the worst headache, like actual migraine headache, that's why they call, call it a migraine attack. And then I threw up and stuff like that. But the most scary thing is that I was very sick in these times and I didn't really know what was going on. I knew where I was, I knew that I was laying in my bed for example, but I, at the same time I didn't. Everything was so fake, I, I couldn't, such a weird brain fog that I had and... I couldn't speak. I didn't know how to say words. I didn't know how to form words. I didn't know anything. Uh, but besides these attacks, my life was just normal, like any other teenager of that age. I um, had these attacks, I would say, like three times a month. 
something like that. And I, the next day after having an attack like this, I was completely wiped out, but I recovered fast and I just had a normal life. But So in the beginning it wasn't that, well, this was very intense. It was that bad. The symptoms that I experience right now when everything is going well, I'm still exhausted, exhausted always. You know, after this video I already said I have to lay down. Um, I always experience pain, I always experience... This is actually the most horrible thing, is the depersonalization. It is something that's also very, very common, it, common in mental illnesses. But people with Lyme disease can struggle with this too. And it's kind of like the feeling of not really knowing what is going on. Everything kind of seeming... looking fake. Um, it's just a very scary feeling that can get super extreme the more sick you get. But right now I'm doing pretty well other than that, the exhaustion. When I look at the worst period of my life, which was like 2018, 2019, you know, it was just two years straight laying in a dark room, uh, curtains closed, as I said, a dark room, lights out, no phone, I couldn't even look at my phone because it was just too, my, too many triggers. Like, you know, when you have a very high fever, you cannot take anything. You know, you can't watch TV because you can't, like, how do you say this? You can't take in what's being said, you just want peace and quiet, you know? So I had this for two years straight, I couldn't watch movies, I couldn't read books because the brain fog was so bad. You know, my mom couldn't even get in my room most of the time, she would just drop off my food and leave again because I couldn't talk for her too long because it was just too much, you know? I was just laying in my bed with an eye mask on, with earplugs in, doing nothing and then at the same time staying up all night because I couldn't sleep from the sickness and from the pain. That's how bad it was in these years. And yes, I had good days in between and those were the days that people, friends would see me outside or, you know, I would take an Instagram picture and that's kind of gave such a wrong image of what my life was like. My illness got so underestimated by everyone, which hurts, hurts a lot, people not taking it seriously, but at the same time you are doing it yourself because I never really wanted anyone beside my mom to see it, to see me that sick, because it's just a part of me that I never wanted to show to anyone. So that answers the questions of the symptoms I have. Again, every Lyme, um, every Lyme patient is different, every patient experiences different symptoms. That's also why it's so hard to diagnose. The patient get misdiagnosed, including, including myself, I got misdiagnosed, well not really misdiagnosed, I just got told that it was in my head that I was depressed and that it wasn't really real what I was experiencing. The symptoms that I had were not real, it was just created in my head. I was depressed, which I was obviously not. How did I find out that I had Lyme disease? So, as I already said, um, I... did I already say this? Brain fog? <laughs> um, when I was 11, I was bitten by the tick in my ear. Yes, I did say that. Um, and then when I was 12, I got very sick with these attacks, as I already said. Um, and then for years and years, I went to doctors, to so many doctors all over the country. And then for years, I went to so many doctors and they all told me the same. I've done so many tests. Every part of my body has been exam examinated. Exam I hope that's the right word. Um, but I every time it was like, you're healthy, and then I was like... And then the doctor was like, why aren't you happy that you're healthy? And I'm like, I'm not feeling healthy, I know that there's something wrong with me physically, but they were always telling me it was in my head, I was depressed, it was just the school stress. And I knew, I always knew there was something wrong with me, physically, not mentally, because when people told me I was lazy, it just, it just hurts me when doctors say this, because I know that I'm not, I want to go out and do things, but I couldn't do things. So, that was a very hard part of my life, to know that you're sick, but doctors keep telling you you're healthy and they won't help you. So, how did I find out? I got sent to a psychologist, I talked with her for a very long time, for months, and then she told me, Rose, there's nothing wrong with you mentally, there's something physically that makes you feel awful mentally. And I knew that, but for an expert to... S and I knew that, but for an expert to say that made me feel very, very valued. And she then sent me to this acupuncturist, I hope that's the right word, 
Um, and she heard my whole, this, this acupuncture thing was like my first holistic treatment that I did. And she heard my whole story and she was like, this, this really sounds like Lyme disease. And so she sent me to another holistic doctor and he um, diagnosed me, not officially because it's not a regular um, doctor, it's like a holistic doctor, so you know, it's not in the system. Um, but he said I had Lyme disease. Um, I then went to this Lyme clinic, they also said I that I had Lyme disease. It was pretty obvious because the thing is that the tests are so bad, they only test on the antibodies, but most people don't have these antibodies because... Wait, why? What's that again? I feel like in the f if I'm right, please don't take this information about to say as facts. If you want to know the facts, please Google them. <laughs> but um, I believe when you've bitten so many weeks after you've been bitten by a tick, there are no antibodies. And then when you're very sick in a late stage, you are too sick to make the this antibody. So basically, every Lyme blood test in the hospital came back negative, so... These doctors just don't, don't know anything nowadays. They don't know anything about Lyme disease. It's just terrible. Um, but the good thing is that I did, in the end of 2019, I got officially diagnosed because I got into... I got accepted into a very specialized hospital for Ly in Ly a very specialized hospital in Lyme disease. Um, and I get, did get officially diagnosed there, which I'm very grateful about because now I feel like what I have is real and I can actually tell people I have Lyme disease. It's in the system, you know? So that's how I found out. Um, and there was also another question, which is how long did you have it before getting diagnosed? That's... Well, the official diagnosis was 2019, so I was... 18? Yes, I was 18 in 2019 and I got bit by a tick when I was 11 so that's 7 years of being undiagnosed before that I did some like holistic treatments because I already knew that I have it, had it and that was 2018 so I was 17, yeah, so I would say like 6 years of being undiagnosed this, that's why it became chronic, you know, if doctors were more developed if they knew more about Lyme disease this all could have stopped. I could have gotten like a month of antibiotic treatment and I would just be healthy right now, which this is this is just awful that this is the case and that's part why I'm making this video because if you are experiencing um, symptoms like this and people tell you, doctors tell you that you're healthy, please ask about Lyme disease and ask for an extra test and ask for these antibiotics because it's so important even when you just get a tick bite. You know, you don't have to get the whole bull's eye rash because most people, I'm not quite sure about the facts, but a lot of people don't get a bull's eye rash, including me. And well, I did get some weird red rash, but not the actual bull's eye rash. You can still have it. So I would just suggest anyone that's got a tick bite to take antibiotics and demand your doctor to give you at least two weeks of antibiotics because you certainly don't want to end up like me. Let's face it. The next question is, can Lyme disease be cured? I kind of already asked, answered this question. It can be the, um, it can be cured, but only in the early stage. So let's say you get a tick bite, you go to the doctors, they give you antibiotics, you're good, you know? But if you go six years being undiagnosed, you're gonna get chronic Lyme disease like me and it cannot be cured completely. But I have to say that I did make so much improvement, like, look where I am today. You know? Uh, I'm very grateful for that. And of course, you never know what's gonna happen in the future. Maybe there will be a cure someday. You never know, and I do hope to make more and more improvement, but it is kind of a fact that I will always stay more tired than the average person, or have a little pain sometimes, you know? But I can, I can live with that. I really can live with that, because you know, Lyme disease gave me so much heartache, but it also made my life, in a way, so much more beautiful. It sounds weird, but let me just give you this example. I have to go back to, like, 2019. I was, like, sick almost every day. I had, like, a few good days that year. But the day that I could go out, even if, if I was, like, laying in this with my, in my wheelchair, my mom was pushing me, I was, like... Even I was in the city center for, like, 30 minutes, and I could go into shops, 
I was almost crying of happiness about how happy I felt to experience that because when you're that sick you're gonna appreciate this little thing these little things so so much and it just it completely changes your life I feel so 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 happy every single day because I know what it's like of to be so sick to be like oh god gosh to feel like you're actually dying because there's been moments where I thought like I cannot make it I cannot make it another day and to still be here to have been through all of that and still be here it just makes me very grateful and very happy you know and when I go to the grocery store and get my groceries it's just <laughs> it makes me feel happy to do something so normal okay um so the next question is what is the biggest struggle you face dealing with Lyme disease um I have to tell you that the biggest struggle is um the people around me not the people that are very close to me of course not but um the reaction of people you know the people the way people treat me because you know being so sick is one thing but people not understanding and people not treating you right is so much worse like when i was still in school obviously i couldn't tell people what was wrong with me i just said that i was very tired and exhausted and i had, had all these pain all the time and i you know, I had permission to leave school whenever I couldn't go, whenever I was too tired, uh, you know? So I usually went to school for like one or two hours a day. My classmates were always like, Oh, Rose, you're so lazy, always skipping classes. Everyone is tired, everyone is tired, you know? It's just the way it is. Everyone is stressed, you know? I just got awful comments and I kept saying, This is not something that everyone experiences but at the same time I couldn't tell them what was wrong with me because I didn't know myself what was wrong with me you know those comments are very very hurtful and then um, even when I did know what I had and I could tell to people I, to me and we're like oh this was at the time where I was already out of school I couldn't even go to school anymore not even for an hour a day they were like oh Rose I wish I was you I could just lay in my bed all day not go to school oh can I have your life please this is just and then not even talking about what I still experiencing to this day is missing out on things letting people down you know people still not understanding they're still friends of mine I don't mean this in a mean way because I understand and this is so hard to understand but they're still friends that don't understand they don't seem to understand when I cancel because it already hurts me so much to cancel on people it's the most awful feeling for me and to get an awful response or people not understanding is very very painful um you know just missing out on things in general and people not understanding not treating you right you know i get pretty ableist comments as well but comments like um oh is she really sick is she really in a wheelchair because i saw her walking and you know you can be in a wheelchair and still be able to walk. I can walk perfectly fine. You know, actually today I can almost always walk. But uh, two years ago I was in a wheelchair outside, but I can just walk in the house. You know, I can't walk longer than two. I couldn't walk longer than two minutes. You know, I just get awful comments online of people saying that this is fake, that I'm faking this for attention. It's just, that's maybe even more painful than being sick yourself. Because as I said, having to deal with this every day of your life feeling like you're like the end is near every single day and then still seeing getting comments like that that's even more awful but obviously i get much more love than i get hate so that's good i'm so 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 grateful for all my family and friends over the years for all their support because that is what has gotten me through all of it okay how does lyme disease affect your schooling so i dropped out of school in 2018 completely dropped out of school three and a half years ago. I have tried studying on my own, like I've studied photography and Swedish just for myself because I love studying actually. <laughs> it sounds weird but I love studying and learning things but most of the time my brain just couldn't really do these things. So I could go to college but I'm physically not able to do that and I'm, that's why I'm actually so grateful that I got this platform that I can kind of like work from home a bit I'm so, you have no idea how grateful I am for this. So that's how it affected my schooling. And this was back in the day when there were no Zoom classes, things like that. Nope. 
if they would have just like gave me like online school, maybe I would have graduated. You know? Okay, when was it the hardest for you and did you have to sit in a wheelchair? About the wheelchair I did already um, answer this, but I'm so happy that I don't really have to use it anymore. And the hardest time for me was 2008-2019. I went through very hard treatments and those were times where... Oh, I don't... I, it's quite traumatizing to actually... I say that it's made my life so much better, but it's also very traumatizing to think back about these things. So yeah, 2018 and 19, 19 especially, I just don't, don't really want to think about it anymore. You know, even the clothes that I wore back then, the things that I liked, the way I decorated my room, everything, I wanted everything gone. Nothing, because everything reminded me of that. Next question, do you also have good memories from the bad times? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know, me and my mom always had so much fun at the hospital. It sounds quite weird, but... <laughs> I think we all, my mom always made it so much fun for me. We were doing stupid things like racing with my wheelchair. And one time, one time we were just like, we had like a very good result one time. Like we actually thought we're gonna get help. So my mom wanted to give me a kiss and she pulled the wheelchair back and she wanted to give me a kiss. <laughs> but then she, she like, um, we fell, no, my, wheel, my wheelchair fell like um, back. And we were like, I was like laying on the ground in, in the middle of this hospital. We were laughing and laughing. It was so much fun. And like we did so many other things like, you know, she bought me balloons and we just had fun. And I don't know, hospital days were quite fun when I look back at them. How does it affect your day-to-day -day life? Um, yes, I kind of already mentioned this. Um, it does affect my daily life. I would say that I'm like two, th two times a week I'm stuck in bed. So I have like periods of time where I'm in bed for like weeks. No, I'm not. I'm now talking about the past few months. I'd say like four to five days a week I can be productive, film, do things for my TikTok, for my Instagram, which is some things that I love to do. Um, but it still affects me on days like this, as I said. Next question is, how do I know if I have Lyme disease? So if you have symptoms similar to me, you're tired, you're in pain, you have symptoms and you're not diagnosed and everything comes back negative and you have like a similar going on as me, don't give up when the doctor says you're negative. Look further, like go to different, like please try the holistic route. I'm, I was a little not sure about it in the beginning, like this whole natural thing, but Looking back at it, those are the treatments that have worked for me the best. You know, I've had long-term antibiotic treatment, it did work, but in the end it just made me more sick. And looking back at it, all those um, herbs and things that I got, uh, natural treatments, worked so much better for me. So please look into that. Um, get treated, like get tested for Lyme disease in that part of the healthcare, you know? But I can say, looking at your symptoms, you can already, like, Kind of be sure if you have Lyme. Not sure, sure, but you can kind of already know if you have Lyme disease or not. Yes, I would just like to end this, this video by saying that you should never ever underestimate someone with Lyme disease, with any chronic illness for that matter. When they say they're in pain, they are in pain. You know, when they say they're not in pain, they are in pain. You know, you never ever ever underestimate the life of someone with a chronic illness because you have no idea what it's like waking up every single morning of every day of every week of every year not feeling healthy that's one of the most awful things always always take them seriously and anyone who's suffering from any illness doesn't have to be chronic it can also be like very short term never underestimate it and always be there for these kind of people uh, same goes to people with mental illnesses just check up on your friends and be kind to one another because you know, so so many things can be so hurtful and if you would just show some love to the people around you, that would just fix everything. Whew, I'm so glad I finally finished this video. I am so proud of myself because this took me three years to do. Thank you guys so much for listening and if you're still watching, you are amazing and thank you for listening to this and please share this with the people you care about because I'm only sharing my story to help other people. Be careful, always do tech checks and please check up on your friends, on your loved ones. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time.